Hi, this is the second lecture of our last week and uh, this will probably be the last lecture as well. Um, so this is about uh, the C preprocessor. Um, now uh, the C language actually comes with a component called the preprocessor. Um, you've been actually using this preprocessor since your first program. So for example, every time you write something like hash, include and something else, uh, you're essentially invoking the preprocessor. The preprocessor, as its name suggests, performs some kind of pre-processing, right? So before this program actually gets compiled, uh, it is handled by your, by your compiler, um, the preprocessor comes uh, you know, in between. So the hash include directive of the preprocessor that you guys have been using for uh, for so long now um, allows you to add source code from other files within your program. Uh, similarly, you guys have probably also seen the hash define directive. We used it, I think, for uh, defining the size of the arrays, right, in our in our uh, programs. Um, so just to be clear, uh, all these directives, right, and the preprocessor directive directives they are not really something that the compiler sees okay uh, before the compiler actually processes your code um, these directives are replaced with some appropriate code now what those uh, what that code is we will we'll have a look in this lecture but uh, but before we go ahead uh, let's start with a detour and uh, we'll actually come back to this detour towards the end of the lecture uh, this detour is about splitting our code into multiple files we uh, we discussed it uh, when we were discussing the static and global variables in in a very short right in, in a very short uh, sense uh, but uh, we, we didn't really went into more details but uh, today we are just going to visit it again um, so the issue is that it is normally not a good idea to put all your code inside just one code file you know inside just one c file um, uh, irrespective of that in fact this is basically something that is irrelevant just for uh, you know irrelevant uh, as far as the language is concerned this is something that is relevant um, across the languages to be honest okay, this is a good practice in general to split up your code into multiple files and uh, at some point of time even if uh, uh, you are using you know a, a, a languages where a lot of code can be written in very few lines even then you will feel the necessity to break up your code across multiple files. So um, one of the major uh, ways to, you know, one of the major ways to uh, split up this this code across multiple files is to dif is to distinguish between what could go inside a header file and what could go inside a C source file. Okay, now we are talking about just about C. And uh, if you remember, uh, in week eight we saw something called as car.h right this car.h uh, uh, file it was actually declaring some some template right for uh, for cars so so that was a very simple example um, now in if you actually go through uh, the DC libraries that we've been using um, when you when you decide that someday you might actually decide that uh, to write your own C library uh, there are some common practices that uh, that you should be aware of um, so, for example, what people usually do is they put all the declarations of the supplied functions, right? So, let us say in um, in string dot s, you have some 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 functions for calculating the length of the string, or uh, uh, you know, copying string from one place to another, things like this. So, they actually take out all the all the declarations of these functions, and they put it inside a header file called the, uh, you know, usually uh, it, it 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 ends with the extension dot h. So something .h uh, usually it is directly uh, related to the library which you are creating. Uh, then what they do is they actually write the definitions of these functions in one or more source code files, right? So these are the actual um, .c files that we have seen uh, most of the time. And then um, what they do is they actually only provide object code. Okay, this is basically the compiled binary code. Uh, of these functions and then um, as a as a user you are supposed to link them you know link this code with your own application now i know that many of you have not seen the digression lecture on linker um, maybe it is a good idea to have a look at it 
uh, if you cannot understand what is the difference between a linker and a compiler it is it is probably a good idea to go and have a look at that digression lecture so basically when your users the users of your library um, they they actually want to use your library what they do is within their code they include the header files that you have created which contains the declaration of the functions and then the object code of your uh, functions has to be linked with their own applications uh, one example which we have seen in this course was that minus lm switch okay that we used for the sqrt function from the math library so that is something like this you included the math.h file in your code and then at the time of uh, building your application you had to use minus lm in order to link the object code of the of the functions in the math library so that the final application can be created so the most common uh, preprocessor directive that you guys have probably already seen is the hash include directive um, the hash include directive is nothing more than just a copy paste okay so what really happens is um, it copies contents of one file into another file and this is what you've been using for a long time um, so so what really happens is uh, when the compiler actually gets the code for compilation it will appear that uh, the code that you included from the uh, including you know included file uh, it is it was just a part of the source file itself right so let us say if you say something like hash include stdio.h what really happens is the code of stdio.h gets pasted within your own c file so this is very simple um, what really happens is something like this you have let us assume that you have a file called yellow.x now the reason i have used the term x here um, even though there is actually no restriction on the actual um, uh, the actual uh, extension that you have for your c files um, but but in the normal uh, convention is that uh, you name them by dot c or dot h file so so but but still i'm just trying to make it more generic that uh, it could be any c source file it's just called yellow dot x and uh, let us say i'm trying to include this yellow dot x inside another file called green dot x um, so it looks something like this you have a statement yellow dot x and then um, there is some some other code that you have within green dot x which you know i'm just using these these colors to show uh, some some part of code right this is this is nothing but some c code <clears throat> now uh, what really happens is what happens is that uh, uh, the the actual code that your compiler sees it doesn't have this it doesn't have the statement at all it looks something like this the yellow part comes up and sits here and the green part is here right so this is uh, this is really what happens with the uh, the hash include thing it simply copies stuff from the source and then puts it at the destination this is what uh, your uh, hash include directive does um, this is not really the most accurate way to show it because there might be some kind of conditional processing as well but this is the vague idea of how the hash include directive works now another directive that you guys have already used probably is the hash defined directive the hash defined directive is commonly used for three purposes the first purpose is that you might actually want to define simple constants like let us say the size of an array that we have probably already done um, you can use it to define uh, what are known as macros okay so so what are macros we'll just discuss them but they are a kind of um, very simple functions they are not really functions you will understand this um, but uh, but but yeah you can in most cases you can simply treat them like a function um, they can also be used for conditional preprocessing that we'll have a look at later. Um, so let's just just uh, look at this particular use case. Um, they, this is one way to use the hash define thing. You basically say hash define some 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 constant and then the value of that constant. This we have used in a, for uh, declaring the size of our arrays. And uh, now another way in which you can use these hash define directives is something like this now uh, at the core the hash define works very similar to the hash include it is just going to do some copying and paste right and uh, in case of hash include this copy paste uh, occurs from a different file here this copy paste uh, occurs at a, at a very local level so what really happens is um, we can make use of this, this dumb copying and pasting for our own advantage how we can actually use it to create some kind of uh, data type agnostic functions what i mean by data type agnostic 
is that uh, in a typical function uh, you have to actually say this is the the type of inputs it takes this is the type of value it returns uh, all those things you don't have to care about when it when you are creating a macro of course the problem is uh, because of this dump copying and pasting sometimes you have you might actually see results this, this especially happens when you are using um, some kind of expressions okay so so if you are using some kind of expressions um, you can actually get unexpected results as well so this is a very simple example uh, i'm just creating a macro called square here you can see that it looks it looks very similar to how a function is defined right it's just that uh, i don't have a return type i don't have a data type for x um, and there is there are no braces here but basically it is it is very similar to that so whatever it's saying it is saying um, if you get x um, you know just replace it with x asterisk x this is exactly what it says whenever you find square x replace it with x asterisk x now if you want to use it this is how you actually use it square 5 or square um, sq1 you can see that this is actually identical to a function call in fact if i don't tell you um, you might not even know whether square is a function or a macro uh, but what is really going to happen is there is just going to be some copying and pasting so what your compiler actually sees is something like this um, the square 5 gets replaced by 5 into 5 and this is square sq1 gets replaced by sq1 into sq1 now the advantage here of course is that uh, uh, you, you did not have to declare a, a return type here you know all you have to do is simply pass something to square it could be constants it could be variables it could be expressions another advantage is that uh, it is not restricted let us say they're just integers or just doubles or uh, a particular type of data type you know as long as this particular copying and pasting makes sense in the place where it has been used as long as this is this is being followed um, you can use any data type here this is this is the idea okay so you can see how a macro can be useful for us now uh, till now whatever we just discussed are basically very dumb things right i mean um, it might actually make you feel that the c preprocessor is uh, is nothing more than a dumb copy paste machine but uh, uh, but there is more to this preprocessing than uh, than just these copy pasting thing you can actually write certain con types of conditions as well okay so for instance um, this uh, hash if directive okay you might have not used it uh, till now but it is there uh, the hash if directive can evaluate an expression of course the expression must evaluate um, to an integer it is same as uh, how you write an if condition it must evaluate to a true or a false thing um, so any pre-processing code that you add after this hash uh, if directive uh, it is executed only if that particular condition evaluates to true so for example if i write something like this hash if not defined size of array hash define size of array as 10 so uh, here what happens is that if this particular statement okay um, which essentially says that uh, this constant called size of array if it is not yet defined please define it as 10 right and you have to understand that it happens if and only if right so um, if size of array was defined previously then you don't really venture here right so uh, it will only go here if size of array has not yet been defined and this uh, defined x expression actually returns you one if x has been defined somewhere prior to reaching this particular statement and uh, the end if statement here this is more mostly like a, a like a closing bracket you know so whenever you type something within an if condition uh, within the block of an if condition um, you put those bra braces here we are not using any braces this end if uh, basically signals that um, you know the the pre-processing part ends here and uh, in fact uh, you actually have the whole trinity uh, if else if and else right so this is what you do in uh, in typical conditional programming you have all three equivalents for uh, conditional pre-processing as well right so you have something known as hash l if which is essentially equivalent to else if 
and then you have this hash else which is essentially equivalent to else uh, we we don't really need it here so i mean uh, and, and plus um, usually uh, using elif and else it requires uh, you know it, it it happens only in advanced use cases so we are not going to cover that um, uh, the hash the the you know the hash uh, if and a not defined part right this part that we just saw this example this is actually a very common example and uh, the reason where why you even you might actually require it is because uh, they are used to uh, get rid of a problem which is uh, which can be considered as the mute the multiple inclusion problem uh, what really happens is something like this uh, I'll, I'll just talk to you about it uh, so so this this problem is actually so common that uh, they have two different um, directives which are dedicated shortcuts for the for the code that we just saw right now right so essentially this uh, hash if not defined x is equivalent to writing uh, hash if and def x right so if and def is basically uh, telling you if not defined similarly hash if defined x is equivalent to writing oh i forgot to write here so that is actually hash if def x i'll just change the slides um so um so you can see the the, the parallel things right so this is this is just a shortcut um if you want to write this you can simply write it like this so the reason why you have uh, you know this specific shortcut like this is because there is a problem um, where we actually include a piece of code multiple times within the same compilation unit right uh, this usually happen when we include a particular header file inside another header file and then uh, while including this second header file in the in the source code file we also accidentally include the uh, header file that uh, was already included so i'll just give you a simple example let us say this green.x file that we had you know um, in which we had uh, included yellow.x uh, now when 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 it actually uh, you know unrolls you know when when you finally see it from the perspective of a compiler this is what you see you know this is this part is basically the code from yellow.x and this part is the actual green.x code um, so now let us say you also have something like red.x and um, and this happens very often that uh, assume that in red.x you are actually using some functionality which you feel is defined in green.x you know in this part and at the same time you are also using some functionality which you feel is defined in yellow.x you know this part of the code um, because you might not have opened up the code of green.x and you might not be aware that green.x is already including yellow.x uh, you know you might innocently try to include both green.x as well as yellow.x in your uh, red.x file now this is going to create a problem why because if you remember the hash include simply uh, copy paste stuff from one point to another point so when you try to uh, you know kind of uh, uh, unravel this okay before compilation this is what it would look like that uh, this piece of code will come from here to here and uh, this piece of code you can see will will come from uh, yellow.x directly so so now uh, essentially what is happening is that the content of yellow.x has been included twice in your red.x so this is going to be a problem why because except for a very few peculiar cases um, this will result in an error where you will see something like multiple declarations or multiple definitions uh, because essentially you have just written the same piece of code twice this is what the compiler would look like right the compiler will see that you have written the same piece of code twice in the same c file so in order to take care of this we actually use this hash if and def directive very heavily so what we do is we actually create a sample token okay uh, we simply define a sample token inside a particular uh, pre-processing block and then we use this token to check if this particular block has been included before okay and if it has been included before we simply ignore that part so how do we do that something like this um, in this example what we really want is that uh, because the code from uh, yellow.x has been included so this part okay this 
uh, code you know doesn't get included from yellow.xs content so to do that we see we change our yellow.x slightly whatever code we want to put within yellow.x we uh, basically wrap it around um, these 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 statements right so essentially what we do is we create a uh, token called underscore yellow uh, and then we write it something like this if and uh, underscore yellow define underscore yellow so this is this what does this mean that if this token has not been defined please define this token run this code okay basically pre-process this code and then this is the end if part so this is equivalent to that uh, size thing that we were seeing before now um, when you actually include this in in green dot x no problems because uh, uh, this is the only the first time that uh, uh, compiler will see this underscore yellow so green dot x looks like this as usual um, uh, what happens though that's that when you try to include both green dot x as well as yellow dot x inside red dot x this is where things become interesting that uh, this if and if directive evaluates to true for the first time you know so when you are uh, when this part is being expanded uh, then at that time the if and if uh, says oh yeah underscore yellow has not yet been defined so please include the code from here to here but then after that uh, during the inclusion of this this yellow part in this code um, what happens is that this underscore yellow token gets defined and then subsequent calls to include yellow dot x okay th this is this basically this call um, uh, the if and f actually evaluates to false right because uh, uh, underscore yellow has already been defined and hence this makes sure that the content of yellow dot x gets included only once in red dot x so we come back to a simple detour that uh, we took in the beginning of the lecture about uh, you know distributing our code into multiple files so there's one more thing that we should just discuss which we, uh, you know and then uh, we can we can end this lecture uh, this is how exactly can we uh, build an executable out of code that is split across multiple files so one thing that you already know is uh, if you do split code across multiple files um, you have to put those guards right so that uh, accidentally you do not include uh, the same piece of code twice or thrice within your compilation unit um, now this is where uh, you have to understand the difference between compilation and linking and uh, you know again I have said that uh, uh, there is a lecture out there please have a look at it if you haven't but the idea is something like this um, you know I'm just summarizing it because you might actually uh, like to go through the additional reading uh, slide which is there towards the end of this uh, uh, this lecture um, but otherwise you know this is this is basically a little advanced stuff uh, what we do is we compile the individual source files with a switch called minus c the minus c switch actually does not produce an executable but instead it produces uh, something known as object files with with extension dot o okay which are essentially compiled source code of your um, uh, c code okay so basically this is a kind of binary representation of your c code then we produce one executable by linking all these object files together um, this is similar to how we have been doing you know gcc minus g and all the all the object files together uh, and then um, the, the final executable is produced out by the linking of all these objects um, usually we only compile the dot c files with this minus c switch because uh, the dot h files are are, are, you know as I said the convention is that you only use the dot h files for declarations uh, and then you provide the definitions in these dot c files now for a large application you might actually want to build something known as a make file um, I, I'm pretty sure you might have heard this term in the Linux environment right that I'm going to make this utility or, or you know where is the make file um, sometimes if you are installing something from source you would have obviously seen something like a make um, uh, so so anyhow you know the, the, these make files are essentially files where you include the details of how your code should be compiled and linked together uh, please go through the additional reading slide additional you know reading slide which is there at the end of this uh, presentation if you want to pursue this more but otherwise we are done um, this lecture we are going to discuss in the class on tuesday thank you bye